welcome to the Purpose Over Profit podcast with Darren and Chris, where each week we discuss what it takes to live a life of purpose and profit and explore the lives of people trying to achieve just that. Welcome back to the Purpose Over Profit podcast. I'm delighted as always to be with my co-host Darren Green. Hi Chris, glad to be here, really looking forward to this episode. Fantastic. And we're joined by the fantastic Farah Hussein. Uh, Farah, who I met a while back actually, and then from the day I met her, just gave me that confidence and energy to kind of network and actually know that there's always a sounding board there to go back to and have a bit of advice off. Farah is a businesswoman, a mother, a wife, an entrepreneur, and a social influencer, if you haven't ever checked her out on TikTok, which is phenomenal, which we'll come on to. Uh, Farah, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Chris. Hi, Darren. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Great to have you. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, Farah, for our listeners who haven't met you, which I'm sure there probably won't be that many, it'd be good for them to get a bit of an idea of your background, how you came to where you've got to, and basically just a bit from past, present to the future as well. Okay. I love this question because it takes me right back, Chris uh, and Darren, right back to how I started. And I had this great conversation with um, Jenny, um, a lovely podcaster, a a coach as well. And we were talking about our uh, early years and how we all started. I didn't come out to become who I am today. Uh, because of the situation with my family and and children and my husband. I was just a normal housewife wanting six children and uh, just be at home. That's all I wanted. And I used to think, that's not too much to ask, is it? Six children? But thank God, God didn't give me six children. I only got (laughs) two. (laughs) Thank God for that. Um, My husband fell ill um, quite a while back. Let's talk about 17 years ago. He fell ill. He was the main breadwinner. And because of that, I he just the operation just went AWOL. Let's 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 just say that way. Um, cut the wrong nerve and he's disabled on his left side. And I became his carer and the person to look after the young children and be that person to be the main breadwinner um, for the family as well. But I'm um, just going to cut a long story short. That's what pushed me out to go out there and start working. I didn't even know the meaning of um, ambition, determination. I didn't know that. It was autopilot. You're in this situation. What am I going to do? We have to survive. We have to put food on the table for the children and the bills need to be paid. So that what made me go out there and I had my first job, and my first job was working at VHS at the restaurant cleaning tables. And I didn't think anything of it at that time. All I knew was that I'm going to do this job, and it was only a part-time job. And then I had another part-time job with Next. And in between, my young daughter was at nursery. I didn't know how to drive, so I had to get two buses from different areas to go and pick her up, and I had no lunch break. That's how my career started And I came out and was exposed to this world, uh, politics, people. And it was just a whole new world for me because I was very protected when my husband was well and he was out working and I had a great life just bringing up my children and being at home and watching TV. Wow, wow. And then obviously you've went from that career of working in X, working in, was it, what did you say actually? VHS. VHS. Uh, they're, they're not still around, are they? they it, there's not, they're yet. not, they've gone. They're not still. Sure. British, British home store for our younger yeah. listeners, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so they're not around and actually you went from that part of the world. So then what was your next evolution? What was your next step? Well, that was my that was my first uh, first job, and then I went to different jobs and I used to work in Swatch, uh, in Debenhams and I used to sell watches and the girls at the counter there you know they're all dolled up with perfumes and the makeup and everything and I just used to look at them and I'm in my swatch outfit with my caterpillar boots thinking I'm it and I'm dead cool uh, looking at them I'm like I don't think so <laughs> so they were talking about telesales and I was like interested I'm like what's telesales and they said in telesales you make a lot of money and I'm like Chining, chining, right, what is telesales? And they told me, and they said, you need to know, understand your phonetics. And I'm like, what's the hell are phonetics? They taught me how to do my phonetics. They were laughing at me, not with me. And I didn't know that at that time. So they thought it was a joke because they didn't understand the background that I've come from. Um, Being a Muslim woman, working um, 
culturally you're just at home looking after children I'm exposed to all these new things and I'm like a sponge and I want to learn everything and understand things and it was so exciting for me well, I was going to come on to that about your childhood as well to a point because obviously I've read and I've seen that you were brought up by nuns to a point, your school by nuns, sorry, is that right as well? I was at, yes, I stayed, it, my dad always wanted us to go to Pakistan. Uh, so when I was 12, we moved, uh, he moved all the whole family there and I went to a Dominican convent school and it was, re, it was run by nuns and it was American nuns and sisters very disciplined and um, so that's where my my basic schooling started um, from there. So you you then from there then you're shipped into this uh, Debenhams this I mean actually that's one of my when I was a child that was one of my scariest memories walking through these counters where everyone looks like they've got this plastic face on I mean everyone does it for a job it's fantastic but that was one of the scariest memories being a kid walking through those things you're in that counter and people are telling you about phonetics but you've got to learn that and then move into telesales. Yeah, then moved into telesales, went for my job and um, I had my interview with the manager and I just said to her, look, um, I know how to do my, I know my phonetics, I know what telesales does, can I just get the job? And it was just a simple interview, but I need to go back because it's my lunch break. And I got the call and I think that's where the light bulb moment really came for me. When I got that call and she said, um, we well, would love to have you. And I'm like, oh my God. God, I'm working in a call centre. I am so excited. For me, it was moving up. That is what it was. It was moving up and uh, building my confidence. And that's, Chris, that's just where it all started. On the phones, we're in, doing competitive sales um, and just speaking to people. And that's where I found my comfort zone. That's found where I found my niche. Because to me, it wasn't about selling. To me, it was just having conversations and that's where I became the top salesperson in many organizations because that's what I just understood is just having a conversation. My managers used to say to me, Farah, you're a victim of your own success and you don't even realize that you have sold something and you didn't sell. Oh, oh, how did I do that? Then, you know, you do you understand how, how you do things. So that's where my career started in competitive sales. And I worked with um, media like Yale, and we did we did sales there. And it was like um, me, Google, SEO, websites, you name it. Do you know what, Chris? I'm 50 years old. I've done it. I've done it all, seen it. And it was just time for me to move on. I think that's phenomenal. I mean, you, you talk around how you're the top salesperson and you're able to communicate. And I guess we can come on to this later, but that shows how you are just now and what you're doing in the social media world, which we'll come on to. So you've done all that. You've led that, you've led that life. You're supporting your family at this point. You've got one child, maybe now two, is it now? I've got two children, a girl and a boy, yes. At that point, and then you're now becoming the breadwinner, if you like. And then you, is it that point you decided to do something for yourself or were you still working or what was the next next step for you? Well, the, the last job that I had, I was working with Nespresso Coffee. I love my coffee. You know, that's, where, that's how we met. Yep. Coffee, yep. I love it. Yep. Um, when working with organisations, because you're just a number, I believe, I believed in myself after a long time, after all the obstacles that I um, went through, I did a lot of self-development on me and I understood me and I understood what I wanted to do. And I thought to myself, if I stay with this organisation, I will move up. There's no doubt about it. But I just wanted to go out there and create my own something, something that's more purposeful for me, something that was really, really important. And I wanted to open up on my own business cafe, a platform where people can eat, meet and connect. And it was all about people getting together, connecting. It's not who, it's not what you know, it's actually who you know. That's really, really important. And that's my journey. It's all the connections that I made, the relationships that I have built. It's just through those conversations and the connections that were happening. So I just woke up one morning and I decided this isn't for me. I woke up and it was like, I just handed in my notice. Nobody knew what I was doing. Even my Mr. H, I called my husband Mr. H for the beers who was doing <laughs> thing. I call him Mr. H. But um, that's what I did. I just walked away from it. And I just said to the conversation I had yesterday, and I said there was a reason why, absolute reason why, which I understand now, why my husband fell ill. Because if he wasn't ill and if he wasn't, if he didn't go through what he had to go through, we wouldn't be having these conversations today. 
Yeah, so he had to be that person that I had to sit down and the universe pushed me there because it, it, a long time it, for me to understand my purpose in life. So when I've understood the purpose and why of my life, this, this is why I understand why Mr. H was put down there, put to the side. He does his own thing, but I had to get out there and be me. That's so powerful, that story and hearing, hearing that from you. Often when things, you know, bad, you know, when bad things happen, which they, they do happen to us all, you can feel like, you know, why me? This has happened to me. And you're describing that after so many years on that this has happened for you. And almost embracing that difficult period. Yeah, it was it was oh. a long journey to understand that as well, Darren. Because you, at that time you think, well, why why has it happened to me? But Tim, that's where I found my spirituality and I found my religion. And I said, and I used to call. Well, I do sometimes see it when I'm in that mood. I used to, I say to God, dude, you sort this out. You put me in this situation. You've got to get me out of it. It's because of you it's happened. So I don't blame anyone else, but I just blame, I don't blame anyone. I know things that happen for a reason. And the point is you don't understand that reason. And it's so, so important that we are tested. We are tested every single day. Look what's happened now with COVID. We are all tested in different ways. How are we all going to get up and, and bring our lives back together? What opportunities are we going to create for one another? What are we going to do? And there'll be so many people who are still sitting behind those closed doors full of anxiety and thinking, I can't do this. But there's other people who are up there and embracing it. And that's the, that's the secret sauce, is to embrace what's happened and change it and look for the opportunities and just go on with it. I think that's why there's so many similarities between the three of us, if you like. Because obviously I've got a quote here, which I love as well, that you said before, which is, if you run away, if you run after money, it will ruin you. Money is everything. It is nothing if you don't have peace in your heart. Yeah. And I think that is phenomenal, because obviously I've seen your values. You say that you just need to be yourself, which has been honesty, integrity and trust. And that's what you need to embody. And I guess at that transformation point of your career, it sounds, it sounds so brave that you just kind of went, you know what, guys? This isn't working for me, dude. Up there, sort this out. I'm checking out. That, that's me. I'm I'm walking out this career, and I'm going to start my own career with a business calf, a business business networking cafe owner. Which yeah. I've got another note here, which is fantastic. It's bringing people together. So you're the business connector and matchmaker. I love that. I absolutely love that. This is really really important because um, I'm just going to go. Re- I just just remembered something, and it's just daunting. <laughs> um, I, at 19 years old. Um, I ran away from home, 19 years old, and I lived in a country where there was restrictions, and I had to, I had to leave um, at 19, and I had to make that decision. Um, if I stayed here, things would have been different, but it was really, really powerful to make that decision to get up and go because coming from the background that I am, and um, being Muslim, and uh, it would have been really bad for my parents at that time it's shameful for a young girl to leave home and um, so I had to make that decision for me and for myself and it was really really important so that you've just brought that um, memory back and I think I knew at 16 I knew there was a purpose in my life but I didn't know what it was I just didn't know what it was and I knew my parents would be angry with me but I still didn't know what I was going to do but I knew they were going to be angry but um so that's that that's just a bit of background about me and I just really want people to understand that we all go through many many things in our lives and life isn't easy if it was easy we'd all get through it but it's what we do to make that difference not just for us and for others as well. And at 19, if I didn't have those relationships, if I didn't have those connections, and if I hadn't had those friends who helped me out of that situation, I don't know what would have happened to me at that time. Not going into it too much, but I don't know what would have happened. So looking back at that, relationships, connections are very, very, very important because you don't know when you would need that supporting mechanism. You don't know those connections. It could be business, it could be personal, you just don't know. So if you're surrounded with like-minded people there to support and help and guide you, 
you feel confident, you feel strong, and you can pick up that phone, you can message someone, and that person is there for you. And now COVID has happened, we can bring people together from all over the world. This is really, really important. A couple of really things that spoke to me, really important things that spoke to me there. I guess the, the first one was as a young woman having to make that, like, you know, a life decision, really. It's like the way you speak about it and reflect on it is one of the most important decisions of your life. But I guess then fast forward to when you had that, woke up in the morning and said, I, I just need to quit, quit my, my job. This isn't for me anymore. Dude, sort this out. I, I guess when you put those two against each other, one, you know, one against the other, you've almost prepared yourself. Once you, If you've done that, you've, you've made a much more difficult decision at a much more inexperienced you know young age you've you know you've almost waking up and saying do you know what I'm, I'm going to go and um start this for myself you've almost created that through that adversity you've gone through you've created the confidence that it's going to be okay I'm going to make this yeah. I'm going to make this happen um so I thought I thought that was I, I thought that was like really inspiring I have to say and I also want to say if I listen to that which I find phenomenal is that I've seen as well that you put out there that you want to encourage Muslim women to be independent thinkers. And that that is phenomenal, especially given your story just there and where you've come from as well. And even we can come on to the social content later, which is mind blowing. But for now, if we bring it back to your kind of your business cafe about the connections, if you want to explain to the listeners what that business cafe is and what the aspirations for it is just now, because you talked about the global marketplace, how everyone can come together. That'd be fantastic. The Business Cafe didn't happen because um, I fell into coaching and doing other things and how life just gets in the way. But again, it happened for a reason, uh, because it wasn't, it was, I wasn't ready for it because of COVID. And if I had put something out there, I would have lost all my money. But the I, when COVID happened, and I still remember on the 31st of March when I walked away from what I was doing, I went back into my room. Three days, I cried solid. And I hate crying. I'm one of those positive people. I'm like, I'm fed up crying. I don't like it. Cleaned my tears, felt sorry for myself and decided, right, the business cafe, what can I do with it? I'm going to bring it online. And it was just a light bulb moment. I'm like, why didn't I think about it before? But it wasn't the right time. So I've created then, brought the whole concept and I brought Farah um, Networking online. And it's really important. And I really want people to understand networking is a powerful tool and it should be accessible to everyone. It should be simple. It should be affordable and it should be efficient. So what I mean by that is, when I talk about meaningful relationships, I'm not talking about having a networking event, come along, give me your business card, tell me what you do, you're going to get business. It's not about that. It's about cultivating those relationships, building connections, creating raving fans. I love that, creating raving fans. We don't like talking about ourselves, but other people love talking about other people. So Darren, you said in the beginning that you've heard a lot of people talk about what I do. This is exactly what I mean by raving fans. If your sole purpose is there to help and inspire other people, that will resonate with them. They will leave with a lovely experience. And it's so important that everybody understands that. So networking with a purpose, networking for the right reasons, because networking is tarnished with the wrong brush. So what I've done is I've just created the platform and I want to bring like-minded people now, listen to what I'm saying here. Like-minded people is really, really important. When you work with like-minded people, you create power teams, you create collaborations, you create power partners, and you create raving fans. And I've had recommendations all the way from Australia. Can you believe it? Five people recommended FARA networking in Australia. Now, that is phenomenal. I would never have dreamt of that. And it's all about building connections, solid relationships, and for the right reasons. Because what happens is people don't understand. They're looking for monetary value. They're looking for instant results. But if you've got 
surrounding people, you're surrounded with like-minded people, you're building relationships. These are the people who are going to comment on your social media. These are the people who will like and comment your stuff. These are the people who will recommend your services. Do you see what's happening here? You're right. I mean, in the brand world, we call that a tribe of followers, which is fantastic. So they become advocates of your brand, your personal brand, and they'll endorse you and then they'll recommend you as much as possible. Uh, I've been in your networking sessions, which is fantastic as well. I've done lots of networking, both in person and online, and some of them can become quite forced and uncomfortable. Yours is very relaxed. I love the fact because it's online as well, there's tables you can go and sit at. And you'll be having a chat and all of a sudden Farah will pop up and go, is everyone, is everyone behaving in here? Fantastic. And everyone's got a really relaxed, yeah, that's it, a really relaxed, jovial way. So it's really informative and engaging, but there's no pressure there, which I think is fantastic. And I think that's that's phenomenal. And it's definitely, I love the connecting piece and, and like-minded individuals is right as well, because you always say, do you know who's right for you, Chris? Do you know who's right for you? I'll bring them on. And you have a consultancy call beforehand as well. Yeah. You can do that. And I think that is phenomenal. Yeah. And as I always say to people, this far networking is not for everyone. There's lots of networking groups out there and they all do a great job. But if that if that isn't your tribe, then go and find your tribe, go and find a group where it resonates. So every individuals, they've got different journeys, they've got different aspirations. But once you follow, once you find that tribe, stay there, be loyal to them and be consistent, show up. And that's where the magic happens. You mentioned something there, Farah, and I probably, I'm going to probably come with some own misconceptions on networking. I recently left my corporate career, but and I recognised that I needed to, or I wanted to be part of a wider community. Uh, those relationships which I had in an internal organisation weren't there anymore. But what do you, I'm interested to get your thoughts on what do you think the biggest misconceptions are about, that people have about networking in general? The misconceptions people have, oh, tons of them, there's tons of them. First of all, they think, oh, um, it, they're meeting the same type of people. But they don't understand that these same type of people, if they build a relationship, they are going to open up doors for you. And people think that when they join a networking group, they're going to be instantly, um, they'll be selling and they will make sales. And in the first couple of weeks, if they don't get it, they walk away. And that's sad when you actually have that mentality and mindset. And they think it's all about them. That's what it is. It's not about the other person. It's about them. Well, that's a, that was a great example because I remember my first networking session straight out of uh, the corporation, working for a corporation. And it was, a, obviously I'm not going to say a name, but it was an event and you sat down and you did something. And this person came and sat beside me, lovely chap, but he was asking, so what's your business? Explain my business, gave me a card. What's your other business? And he had about six cards on him. He was like, oh, you're not ready for that business yet. That's for a growth startup. Cool. Maybe this business card is for a coach. And I was just blown away. So instead of meeting somebody and getting to know them on a personal level, already it's selling. And the minute you sell to somebody straight away, for me, that's where I kind of lose interest and I can't handle it anymore. It's LinkedIn. If somebody connects with you on LinkedIn and you start selling straight away, that's where it's, that relationship becomes sour in my own eyes. But I don't know what you feel about all that, Farah. Well, I would say if somebody approaches you from on LinkedIn and they send you a sales request or, or information, what they don't realise is that they've just got the front door's just been closed at them. The door's been closed. Nobody will let them in. And I always, and I said this in, in various in podcasts, is that you've got to let people in through the back door. And what I mean by the back door is start building the relationships, find out more about them. And then make them feel that they're important. That's so important. How amazing is that? If someone gives you that credit and makes you feel good, you want to have that conversation with someone else, isn't it? And I'm not saying you have to pretend to do that. You've got to, you've got to really mean it, that you, you like this person and you like what they're doing. And what I always say to people, please give credit where credit is due. People don't do that. People love to criticise, but they never give credit where credit is due. So if I was to say, I love the colour of that wallpaper, for example, Darren, right? And it's really important that small things, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? You wouldn't have thought of that, but it does make you feel good. So it's really, really important to give credit where credit is due and build those relationships, have that conversation, find out about that other person first, because as soon as they start telling to you, you've totally shut off. You're like, I'm not interested. It doesn't matter what he says. And you, and every time you see that person, you'll avoid them. 
And, and I think that's a good link then to talk around your personal brand because your business brand and personal brand can sometimes be quite different, but you seem intertwined. It seems a perfect synergy. And for those who haven't seen your personal brand, I think it's phenomenal, the stuff you put on TikTok. I've got so many notes, actually. So I've got notes here around uh, what, what the key highlight I've got here is you seem to put out engaging content that is thought-provoking but on, on a, a great subject matter. So you've put a great one around a TEDx kind of funny video, but it's talking about how you can marry outside your race or culture. And I think that is really important. It's really different. But then you put out other stuff around 3 a.m., how your kids won't get out of bed, but they'll stay up till 3 a.m. They'll still party. Uh, other stuff about what my kids are, what I'm looking for in my kids' partners. And you get this amazing video where you either go left or right, depending on what you want. But I think the, the critical one is that they'll leave home as soon as possible from memory. And then you've got other ones about the 10K <laughs> challenge. <laughs> other ones about the 10K challenge. And even the really emotional stuff about your you've recently lost your father as well yeah. and about the support you've got from that overall network and that love and appreciation you've given you. So I think that's fantastic for people to see that your personal brand there, you're living that. So somebody approached you from LinkedIn, they would know firsthand what they're going to get. Whereas if they approached you cold, they wouldn't get that, but that lovely emotional content. And where does that drive come from to put that content? Um, what happened, the way it comes from is, um, I always have to go back with this because when I was growing up, I really wanted a role model. I wanted somebody that looked like me and understood me, understood what I was going through. And um, so I really wanted someone to hold my hand and say, Farah, you're okay. You'll be fine. You're going on the right track. And because I didn't have that and I had to learn the hard way. And so I decided that I want to be that person for someone else. So if I can put, I get all teary when I talk about this and it's just like, it's very emotional because if I can change one person's life or if I can put a smile on one person's face, that means so much to me. Followers, or all these people that follow me, I don't want tons of followers. I don't care about that. It happens, it happens. For me, it's important to be myself and to show people what I've gone through, it could resonate with them. They might not have a voice, Chris and Darren. They might not be able to have the confidence to go and speak out. But if they see someone like themselves doing what I'm doing, and that gives them the confidence to do it, that gives me the buzz. And that what keeps me going on as well. I think there's sometimes a, a nervousness. I'm in a mastermind at the moment uh, with a lot of coaches and there's a there's a hesitancy to be out there, you know, out there, I mean, on social media. And I, I often reflect on that's an internal emotion. It's almost selfish in a way and self-indulgent because you're focusing on your insecurities. And, and when hearing you speak about your content and having a look through your page, we connected on Instagram this morning, I think. Uh, I just, the sheer amount of content and how you show up so honest, so consistently, it's because, you know, you might still have some of those insecurities, but the why and the importance and purpose that you're putting that content out there to be a role model, to potentially show people that this is, these feelings are okay. Uh, to question some things as well that's way more powerful than those insecurities and I think there's a real message in there for people I'd love to take away that if you are if you have a message that's important to you get really clear on that and if you can get really clear on that that should be and will be way more powerful and will get you past some of those insecurities about oh, I've not got the lighting quite right or you know I look tired or my hair's a mess that's just my hair but um but you know it's just so so much it's such a powerful message I think to get across so like thanks for like thanks for kind of sharing that that's certainly what I'm taking away from it no it is really important Dan because when I first started I didn't like taking pictures and I wasn't the person that had a profile page a picture on my LinkedIn <laughs> I wasn't one of those people but Tim I finally plucked up the courage my friends said you need to get that out there so I put a picture up there but now when I look at other people's profiles and when I have like one-to-ones with them the profile pictures say something different to the who they actually are and it's a it, that's the that's I don't like that the way it sits you have to be who you are now, if somebody's seen a picture of myself and then when they spoke to me, they should get that. It should link together 
They should be that person. And if you're a face of a company or a face of what you're doing, you should be you. There should, there, you should not be apologetic for being you. Our uniqueness is our superpower. And I've always said that. Wow, so that is everybody is different and everybody will learn from someone in a different way. Now, we all might have the same message sometimes, but we all give it out and deliver it in a different way. So everybody's different. And that is what you should embrace is your uniqueness and forget what other people are thinking. Remember, it's not about you. If you stop thinking that, it's not about you. It's about how can I put out content for people to resonate with, provide value for your audience, not for you. And then when you do that, you don't care if your hair's a mess. I might not care how my headscarf's looking. I don't care what colour I'm wearing. That's not the point because it uh, takes away from you and it's all about other people. Yeah, the, 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 there is so much content, on, honestly, because even you made me laugh at the headscarf. What was the comment that you put out a post recently saying, uh, how do Muslim men make their day better by critiquing the women on their headscarf or their pajamas? Is, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> from memory. Uh, That's right. So honestly, the amount of content you put out there is phenomenal. Not, it's not just about the content you put out there. Obviously, you've got another aspect to you. I mean, before lockdown, all these kind of things. I mean, you've done your 10K challenge. You've climbed Ben Nevis as well. I mean, you've slept in the park for Social Bite. Social Bite is a charity cause. You don't normally sleep in parks, but I'm not telling yeah, you. Yeah, no, do don't, 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 don't. <laughs> but, but you've got another extension to you, which is more than just living your purpose. It's showing that you can do good in the world as well. It's really important to give back, Chris. It's really, really important. Um, I don't think any a lot of people will agree with this, but I believe that um, we should, if you've got, if you're out there and you want to help charities, every charity deserves to be helped. And not every one of us can help every single charity. So I don't associate myself with just one charity. So every year before COVID, I decided I'm going to pick a charity and I'm going to raise funds for them. It could be Skydive, it could be Ben Nevis, whatever it was, I always challenged myself to come out of my comfort zone, lead by example, and do it myself first, and then show people how it's done. And it's really important to give back because we're so blessed with so much. You don't have to have a palace. You don't have to have anything like that. If you've got a roof over your head and you've got food on your table at the end of the day, and if you've got clean water to drink and you've got hot water to shower with, that's a blessing in itself so so important so if we're privileged with these blessings then we should be giving to others as well and i believe my purpose really is that i'm just a messenger here god has put me here and i'm just a door somebody needs to open it and i'll be there to help you i'm not doing it for me i'm doing it because i've been put here i've been privileged to get be in this position to help others so that's the way I think about it, hence why I do all these crazy things. But it keeps me happy as well. <laughs> well by the sounds of it, the dude is telling you to do these crazy things as well. So Am that I sounds do? fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And I guess that helps us bring us back to around the podcast is obviously called Purpose Over Profit. And I think you've explained that quite rightly because by the sounds of it, you've given up a prosperous career to then take the, the plunge and take the change your career path completely and do something for you that's now leads you on to doing all this charitable work, to being supporting others and creating this fantastic community where people can intermingle while creating your own personal brand for others to follow and share and enjoy. It brings people a smile to their face, which is, which is phenomenal as well. You're absolutely right. And I love that question, purpose or, or profit, or can you do both? Yeah. I love that question. The, the way I see it is if you wake up, in the morning and say I'm going to decide I've decided I'm going to open up a business but you're opening up the business for the wrong reasons you're opening it up for chilling chilling I'm going to make money I'm going to make money yes we need to make money it's important to have profit in your business but if you'd really really go back onto this, the board and, and decide what you want to do it's the purpose behind your business that will carry the profit in your business and this is what people have to understand you can have both but the first thing is there's a purpose in your business. Why are you doing it? If you've got the purpose right and you've got your why right, your success and profit, everything will just fall into place. And when you run after money, money will run away from you. It's a simple, simple formula. Don't run after it. 
Decide what you want to do, find your purpose and why, build your business on that purpose and then see what happens. I'm a living example, Chris. I wanted to open up my business for a reason to connect people, bring people together. And that is my purpose and will always be my purpose. But what upsets me with huge organisations and corporations is they all start with a purpose. And that purpose just goes away and then yeah. to them is profit. But you really have to ground yourself and you have to come back and think about, remember your purpose. Always remember why you're doing it and then everything will fall into place. That's fantastic. And obviously, sorry, Dan, uh, we're going to talk around the networking aspect as well, because one thing I'm intrigued to know, I mean, Darren's talked about networking coming out of that field is, what kind of tips can you give people around the networking aspect around is there things to do to avoid you've, you've kind of spoke around being consistent and Darren mentioned showing up as well uh, is there any tips you can give the likes of us or Darren or, or listeners out there on that aspect um, invest in the relationships that you make with networking um, it's really important to have that mindset of helping others and supporting others in business and that's where you will start making really good friends. I have made amazing friends during pandemic. Why have I done that? Is we've invested in a relationship. We've, we've been there for each other in, in hard days and, and in good days. And it's really, really important. They are my power team, right? I call them my diamonds. And you need to look for those diamonds in any networking event that you're out. So you might go to a networking event and you've got 20 people, say, on Zoom. You will not be able to connect with them all. Find that one nugget, find that one diamond and invest in that relationship and see what happens. That is the biggest tip that I will give because I have made amazing friends, amazing collaborations all over the world. And I do these podcasts all over the world. My voice is heard all over the world. And if what I see helps someone else, that is that is just an icing on the cake for me. That's fantastic and really useful, actually. Um, in terms of the time that you spend networking, that's something I'm being honest. I, I'm challenging at the moment and or challenged with at the moment, and it's trying to find that balance. Obviously, with the kids before they were in nursery, we're kind of we're dads, we're trying to run a business and network as well and market that business. But where how like how much time should you be spending on networking? I guess is where I'm uh, where I'm at. Is there a is there a right percentage balance of your 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 business time? It all depends, Darren. I would say networking is your marketing strategy. Yeah. Right. So you need to make time for networking. Now I always say to people is that there are quite a lot of networking groups out there. When I first started networking, I went to every single network because I didn't know anybody. I didn't ask anybody. I didn't know how to ask or what networking would it be. What should it how, which one should I attend but I was told by somebody you would go to an opening of an envelope and I'm like is that a compliment or is that a sarcasm I, I wasn't to know that but I learned that later on in the years so I started going to a lot of networking events and then I quickly established this one isn't for me this one is good so the ones that I felt comfortable with see when your heart tells you something Darren when your heart tells you this is the right one stick to it right? Listen to your gut. And it's really, really important. Yes, if you've got three good, solid um, networking events that you're, that is your tribe, block some time off, because it's really important. That is a part of your marketing strategy. That's where you create your sales funnels. And that is where you will start building up those relationships. So it's really, really important. So once a week, an hour, maybe two hours in the week, depends on which networking you're going to. Be there, but the ones that you go to, please be consistent, be loyal to that group, show up and show your support, and then that's what will happen. And there's other networking groups. Obviously, when you see when someone says you should go to this networking group, and it's like this be squirrel where you're like, Oh, interesting, I need to go there. Uh, but there's no harm in going out and checking them out. Once you've checked them out, whatever feels good for you, you just put that into your marketing strategy, block it off, and make sure you go. To answer that, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. There's almost a selfish element, I think, to this podcast. I'm just asking the questions I'm most interested in. Chris, <laughs> no, okay. re, re, wrenches, wrenches back, Chris. 
But honestly, Fad, I think you've kind of covered off everything we're looking at because we're going to ask about is purpose of a profit or can you have both? You mentioned that as well. And I think it's just, I am encouraged and just amazed by the fantastic work you're doing out there and the fact that you are asking so, so many thought-provoking questions in such a engaging and comical way that helps break down barriers for people as well. So people who are probably struggling with those kind of viewpoints, even if it's a male or female or whatever, then if they see that bit of content, they can't help but smile. And if you can make, if you can educate somebody by making them laugh or by smile, that is fantastic. So I commend you for that. I think that's tremendous. I love fun. I love laughter. And I, I love being positive. That's just me as an individual. Growing up, I used to think men in business, how to tell to suits, why don't they have fun? Why don't they smile? And I always said, when I'm a business owner and I'm not going to do this, and I stuck to what I've said, is because we should have fun. And if there is a question in your head, you should be able to ask that question. Because no question is silly, because if it's come onto your head, the ears popped in there, it means it's a question. I was one of those people who used to be afraid to put my hand up and ask a question, thinking I'm going to look stupid, but now I really don't care. And that's why I put out that thought-provoking content. And it's not all easy sailing, Chris. Let me just tell you one thing. You do get backlash from people. You do get negative comments because not everybody thinks the same way. Everybody's thought process is different. And especially when it comes to politics and it talks when you talk about religion. And But if you are on the right track, and as I always say, coming back, that you know what you're doing, those negative comments don't mean anything. Delete, 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 block, delete. That's what I do because I, I, don't, I don't listen to that because I don't even give it any focus because they are not my tribe. They are not my followers. They are not the people that I want to talk to. And the people that I want to talk to are there and they want to listen to me. That's not a problem. You will get that. Please do not think that if I put something on LinkedIn or if I put anything on social media, people are not going to like it. People are going to give me backlash. It doesn't matter. It's good that you've, that you've hit a chord with someone that they're saying this to you. And it's really, really good. And we've got Clubhouse now. I don't know if you guys are on Clubhouse. And that's another great platform to voice what you have to say as well. No, I'm I'm Android just now, so uh, I've I've steered clear of Clubhouse <laughs> for for now at least. Um, I don't know if Chris has checked it out. I will tell. We should be on it soon. So, but what I was going to say is, uh, how can people reach you, Farah? How can people check you? Out? How can people see this amazing content on TikTok? Oh, follow me on TikTok. Just TikTok. I am I Instagram. Just put in Farah who's seen Glasgow, and I'll come up, and all my content. Um, always comes up. There's another lady called Farah Hussein, but she's a, a, a an actress. But I'm not the actress. I'm just <laughs> I, like I was just I was just about to say. I think I did the exact same thing, and there was an actress, <laughs> and then it was you. So it's not the actress. It's not the actress. It's Farah. Just Farah. <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put this in the show notes, but it's also FarahNetworking.com as well. Yeah. Uh, but Farah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your positivity, your energy, your advice to Darren as well, which is. <laughs> Going to yeah, it feels, it feels like a bit of a, a networking coaching session there for, for, <laughs> for at least half of our podcast. So thank you for that. Yeah, it's not a problem. I do workshops on networking as well um, for people who want to understand how to network because there are a lot of people out there who think that networking should is only for business people. Like um, they, they're not allowed in those kind of groups. Uh, it breaks my heart when people say that. Networking, as I said, should be for everyone. It doesn't matter what you do. It could be a small business. It could be just something that you're doing, a lifestyle, but that lifestyle business can change so many people's lives. It can become a franchise. You can up, open up doors. You just don't know what you could do with it. So networking should be for everyone. So it's important. I'm glad you understood that, Tyra. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much Farah. for the podcast. Thank you very much, Farah. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. As always, thank you so much for listening to the Pop Pod this week. If you'd like to leave a review or share the podcast with others, then that'd be awesome. You'll find us on Instagram at the Pop Pod, and on Facebook we have a community group called Purpose to Progress that anyone can join. And we'll be back every Monday with a new episode, but until then, stay on purpose and we'll see you next week.